right. It's recording. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so this is our team, the uh, reflective team. I'm sure our team in the chapter. Uh, this is me. I'm a health sciences major with a pre-health professional concentration in uh, applying to medical school. And then my name is Sonia Marsh. I'm a clinical diagnostic major specific in medical laboratory science. Uh, I'm also aiming towards a medical degree in the future. My name is Jordan Pierzynski. Um, I'm a health sciences major, and then I'm aiming to apply for PA schools this month. My name is Sandra. I am a also a health science major with a concentration in pre-health professionals, and I'm aspiring to become a physician in the future. So Ascension is through which we did our project. Ascension offers seniors the opportunity to enhance their quality of life by providing them uh, comprehensive, cognitive, and psychosocial assessments that are ultimately shared with uh, their primary care provider. And then the goal is to evaluate the patient's mental and physical health, enhance their quality of life, and then give them access to different medical specialties, uh, depending on their needs, and then connect them to different community resources, and then provide a recommended plan of care that is eventually also shared with their primary care provider to plan out a patient-specific uh, plan of care. So the essence of our kind of CHIP project is we are creating a survey that will be um, used in the upcoming CHIP projects that will be, they'll collect the research in the next session and then potentially form a program uh, kind of based off the research they collect. So our survey fo focuses on the four M's as Angela told us matters most, which is us continuously asking what matters most to these senior citizens and like what kind of goal are they trying to achieve? And the matters most is their value. Like what's going to encourage them to keep going, to hit that goal and uh, enjoy their life kind of. So Angela, for instance, she talked about how her grandkids were her biggest supporters and that she that they were using her for her encouragement. Um, the next is meditation. This is like the self-monitoring of their mental, mental state. Um, most of them do kind of live alone, as Angela was talking about. So we want to make sure they have the resources to kind of provide them a ways to get out of the isolation they may be suffering with, or just give them an outlet to kind of talk with someone because talking to people is kind of good for the soul, gets you lively. Uh, we have mobility as well. So some of their current states of mobility can range like from wheelchair to like fully active. Uh, we also have transportation methods. Some of them may not have access to transportation to reach the OPC. So we want to make sure that we are collecting all the resources we need to understand where they're at. And then medications, making sure that they're not taking um, too many medications, that they actually understand what they're taking and if they're being checked in with their physician. Um, so we did our project at the OPC, which is the Older Persons Commission. Um, it's located in Rochester Hills. And kind of like a fun fact, um, Angela, the coordinator, she said that they are trying to get this name changed actually because Older Persons Commission, it kind of deters people from coming in. Um, it is for um, 50 and up, but um, yeah, it, it's just, it deters people from coming in. And so they are trying to make it kind of more generalized name and more inclusive for everyone. Do you know what the attorney suggested? Um, I don't know if she- Younger really... people come in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we talked about a specific. Meeting. No, not really. They're yeah. they're still in the process, I'm guessing. But she never like mentioned of uh, like a change in the name, like right. to what it's gonna be. But yeah, anything else? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. So some benefits of the OPC. Um. So it is free of charge for Rochester Hills residents. Um. If you aren't a resident of Rochester Hills, I believe it's one seventy five per year, which is pretty great for all of the um amenities that they offer for uh, members. And um, they also provide transportation if needed. Um, they have bus, like charter buses that um, are always coming in and out. And so they can pick, pick up uh, members from their homes and bring them to the OPC. Um, so they're, they're running like is it every 15 minutes or so. Something like yes. that. Um, also, they have tons of activities. Um, when we went on our tour there, I think it was like three stories. Um, they have uh, just a variety of different activities like there's a track, there's a pool, uh, there's pottery, 
There's and, dance. There was a yeah. cafe. There was also um a physical therapy uh, place in which there is a PT over there that checks on each um member. And yeah. Um, yeah. And then um so socialization um some of the members that um are kind of regulars there they um, have the chance to meet other members and so they become the friends with them and there's also volunteer opportunities there for them so it's a chance for them to kind of stay active in their communities um and then there's also a nurse on duty her name is cindy which we will we interviewed her so we'll talk about that a little bit later um something that i thought was really cool is that they have uh, medical residents come in on every wednesday morning um i think when we went it was an orthopedic resident i think they've had like internal medicine a variety of different specialties to come and talk with the members about their health which i thought was really awesome um, and then they also offer referrals so members can come and see the nurse and if it's beyond their kind of scope of practice, they can be referred to any uh, a number of physicians. And then um, they also um, offer care for dementia patients. Um, they do, this kind of offers a break for the caregivers of the dementia patients. And they do activities with them. Um, and when we peeked in, there was like a whole group of them in a circle and they were kind of playing with a ball. And so they seem to really like that. So I think that's really awesome as well. Um, so we also were able to tour the OPC. Um, Angela gave us a nice little tour. Um, we did this last week. And um, so this, these are kind of some pictures that we took of all the different like amenities that they offer. Um, I don't know if you want to go more into Yeah, so our awesome photographer took those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you can see this picture right here is actually the pottery studio. Each studio is also sectioned in each um, uh, of the floors. You can see the first floor is actually, we have um, the store over there in which they actually make the the clothes yes yeah, the members so well. this right here these the members actually make the clothes by like um the sewing and then there's a knitting class and sewing class and um they make these and they resell them in their actual stores they never did that before they're starting to like incorporate this right now um it actually makes like this like even more meaningful that way like they can see what each person and each member is actually making so um also these are the classrooms there's a court there's um there was actually people that were playing tennis and um this is the cafeteria and they also hold meetings in there too and yeah all right so then here are your actual survey questions um, as Angela was telling us, we kind of wanted to go by categories, make it our simplest form possible. Um, and our main value of this was what matters most. So we have like a variety of questions that ask them how, if they think they're at their optimal state right now, and if not, what can we do to get them there? And if there's any resource that they need, can we provide it for them? Is basically the section of matters most. And then we have another section. This is more of the lifestyle questions, which kind of revolved around the three last M's of mentation, mobility, and medication. We want to make sure these are where we want to know if they are taking any medications without getting too invasive into their own protocols. Um, if they're taking, if they, as long as they've talked to a physician about it, making sure they're not over prescribing their own medications, making sure they know what each one is. If they're taking supplements, are the supplements interfering with their medications? Um, if they're staying socially active, are they getting nutritional value from the food? Because the OPC also offers like nutritional cards, they could get meal plans. Um, and if there is anything else they would like to see from the OPC. So this is Cindy right here. We interviewed her as well, and we tried to figure out what mattered most to the members over there and also what their health is like, because our main idea and our main goal is to find if exercise and just being in the OPC is actually beneficial for the members and the senior population over there. Um, so we asked her about like what is like matters most, and she said that she sees like the social, uh, social socializing a lot is like really beneficial because COVID happened and she was always um like seeing members over there too. So since COVID happened, they declined and their like the mental status and everything declined because they were not able to socialize a lot. And just being there right now, just she said that um just being around other people, it's making like them be more active and 
like their health is like better improving right now and um so yeah we asked her if the members are becoming healthier she did agree with that because um of the many events that they hold at the OPC and since it is a free and without cost so it's like more like beneficial and also like they can just go in and do whatever activity that they like and also we had um, an interview with Anne. She is a member of the OPC. She is 80 years old. She loves walking. She goes with, we asked her if like who actually motivates her to go to OPC. And she said she goes with her husband and she has been married for 40 years. And we asked her if she has like um, any available healthy food. She did say that she cooks herself. So, and she has been doing it for 40 years. So, <laughs> so um, and we asked her like, what is actually like meaningful to her? She said her three kids and three granddaughters. So you can see like the correlation of like how people, if they have people that they love or if they have a motive, they are more trying to be more active. That way they can be more healthy so they can you know live longer with their loved ones. Um, and she loves walking, by the way, and she did agree that her health is in a good shape. So communication, um, we talked about the eclipse pillars. So the communication was obviously a major part in this um, chip project. We talked within our group. We talked with Kelly, Angela, Professor Dibble and um, like the members of the OPC and also Cindy was a huge um, role in this project too because without her, we wouldn't have known um, like what was going on. And also going back to Cindy right here, she was um, doing a blood pressure on a previous, was it MBA? Yeah. Professional like a professional athlete. And she was taking his um, blood pressures and vitals that was before we took a picture in before her interview. So this actually means that it's not like weird to go into OPC, even though it's like called the oldest people's commission. So like you can see athletes over there and they're like happy and fun, like, you know, doing activities that they like over there too. So yeah, I'm done. Okay, uh, so with the teamwork, uh pillar, we uh, all con contributed towards the survey questions. We all uh, gave like equally few questions to come out with like a list of survey questions to ask Anne and Angela, I'm sorry, uh, Cindy. And then we all planned our meetings together. So when we all can come together to go to the OPC or to meet with Angela, and we all also as a team finalized our presentations and then did the designing or like putting the pictures up, writing all the slides and just formatting and everything, we all contributed equally towards that. And then just extending the teamwork over to the next semester chip project, making sure we have uh, good data and good research so that the next uh, group can uh, build on that and further expand the project. And then next is values and ethics. Like I talked about most of the presentation, uh, we base our survey questions off the four M's, which are our values for our uh, senior citizens to answer and we want to make sure we are maintaining our personal boundaries with them so we can cross any lines as well as make actually find the value of the health of senior citizens so we can achieve our goal with this plus we all have older relatives loved ones so it all kind of touches home we want everyone to remain as healthy as, as long as possible and then lastly roles um so each one of us had kind of our own roles um lauren and i kind of focused more on the presentation and then arham and sandra um kind of planned like the OPC and questions and stuff like that, but um, overall, all four of us kind of bounced ideas off of each other, which is great. Um, and we have Professor Dibble, which was our advisor for the project, um, and then Angela Del Polk, um, she was like the coordinator for Ascension, and then she's the one that gave us the tour of the OPC, which was really awesome. Um, and then Cindy was the nurse at OPC, she was really helpful in answering our questions and kind of what OPC stands for and what they do. Um, and then Anne was um, one of the members of the OPC and she was really great and willing to answer questions and you can kind of see how um, happy she was there and she volunteers there and everything so that was awesome to get her input 
Um, and then, you know, all the other seniors at OPC that we saw, um, you know, whether it was playing pickleball or getting their vitals done, pottery, they were all just so amazing and talented. And then we have um, our Eclipse director, which is Kelly, which is super helpful throughout our whole project. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> I would like to add actually one more thing. So this was our um, trip project. And also we are thinking of expanding it more to like the next group that would be maybe upcoming in the next fall. Um, so we do have the questions and the survey. We would like to maybe do a health health fair with the OPC that way to get more data on like the members of OPC since we only like interviewed and and it was like a little bit like time sensitive. So um, maybe on the long run, if we do a bigger like research, that way we find what is actually a better correlation with the um, members' health and the seniors. Also, one more thing that Angela mentioned is that we can also like expand by like standing in front of like grocery stores and like yes. putting up tables to kind of give, yes. give information and let people know that OBC is a place that they can yes. go to. Um, we did have, uh, I mean, we did see so many like tables at the OPC that had um, like surveys and flyers. So we were thinking of also doing like a table and doing our survey and just passing it out to um, the members and then like filling it out. But um, unfortunately, we didn't have the time. And um, maybe like the next group could do that too. If not, a health fair is like more beneficial and would be a little bit better to find like the actual data of the um, seniors. Yeah. So what did you learn? <laughs> so um, in my opinion of what I have seen, I learned that the better motivated you are, like if you are a senior, so like just seeing the seniors being motivated and having someone that takes care of them and they are loved over there in that place and they have like someone to talk to, um, it is very beneficial to like get them active. So um, as active as they are, it's better for their health as well. Um, I also thought it was pretty cool, like the level, level of um, healthcare that they kind of provide, because I always thought, you know, it's, it's, you have to have insurance, you have to, it's expensive, but you know, they can kind of get like baseline healthcare and like vitals and stuff like that, which is really great. And they can get referrals. So I thought that was really neat. And then also like getting to know how socialization is so important for them, especially the COVID part that can be coming mm -hmm. to that like there's so much open for them. And then like it's to that extent that like even like winter storms and all that, they would like come up to OPC just to be there mm -hmm. with everyone. So that was definitely interesting to me. I was like learning that there was actually an OPC in this area. I mean, I know the name's gonna change, but like back in Romeo, where I'm from, we have like a community center, but it's more generalized for the younger population. So it's good to know that the residents of Auburn Hills or further have a community center they can head to. And I would like to add to um how we, like I work at Troy Beaumont and I see so many like seniors over there, especially in the ortho place and um, in the ortho unit. And I work in the rehab unit. So they are mostly like bedridden and they're, they cannot tend to themselves while we saw like the opposite at the OPC and how they were so active and they were like doing activities, they were playing ping pong and like basketball or um, like just being social and trying like, you know, not bedridden and, you know, they can't do anything when they're in the hospital. So it is like a difference that we saw. It's very refreshing to see. Yes, it. yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, um, they I think they're most um like member the the longest the longest member that was with the OPC she unfortunately passed away um I think two months ago and she was 90 95? I think 95 years old yeah. so it gives us hope that there are <laughs> there are like these kind of organizations out there that they don't have cost and they are more willing to be like helping each other or like helping the seniors out. They even have like uh, residents that tend to the um to OPC to see like the health of the patients. And if they need referrals, as we mentioned, they do refer them over there. And since there is Cindy, like she's a nurse, she always like has like uh, answers to everything that they ask for. So yeah. I, I've known of OPC since many years ago. Yeah. 
And I can tell you that the stuff that they're doing now, they were not doing like they never had a nurse there. Right. In fact, they didn't even want to know if you had high blood pressure. They didn't oh. want to so, I'm glad to see there's been a change yeah. in philosophy. Definitely, yeah. What they do with that. What were some of the challenges that, just in terms of the project? In terms of the project, I would say uh, trying to find the time to actually like get together and trying to go to the OPC at the right timing and also coordinating with Cindy. She doesn't like work um, like our time. She works from, I think it was 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. And we all have classes, too. So it was like kind of tough to figure out and coordinate with that time. I think also trying to find members to interview. Um, yeah. A lot of them were, you know, in a really intense ping pong game. <laughs> yeah, like ping pong game. <laughs> so we didn't want to kind of distract them from yeah. activities, but. Some yeah. were doing pottery and others were just doing other activities. So we not, <laughs> we could not be able to, yeah. How is Ascension associated with OPC? Yeah, it was an, yeah. Angela is from Ascension. She kind of like provides the nursery to OPC. So like Cindy is through her, through Ascension. Yeah. Kind of exactly. yeah. 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 Angela is a community pro person for Ascension. Okay. Yeah. Do you think of a partnership? I'm not totally sure. Yeah. Like where the funding comes for the OPC. Does that come from? I think it is taxpayers. Yeah. Taxpayers. Yeah. It's yep. a village that's. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very pleased with your survey. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Use the survey in future projects. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you know if the OPC has done these surveys? Do they collect this data regularly? They have sure. done health assessments similar to it, but not of like such a broad level. Yeah. Yeah. Just general like blood pressure yeah. and yeah. diabetes and things Correct. like that. Okay. Yeah. And um, I mean, they do have like in every um, section of the OPC, there's like a flyers over there. So obviously there's like lots of great resources that they can use, but um, I don't think we have seen like a broad, like, um, I mean, more in-depth survey than ours, but yeah. Yeah, I wonder doing it in person too, like an in-person interview might be the yeah. way to do it yeah. versus like people having to sit and write yeah a lot of time you're taking to write it yeah, yeah, yeah. versus you can capture like, i mean and like Anne's this was Anne's answers <laughs> she was actually uh, a manager at the meadowbrook oh, she was a, yeah she was a manager at the meadowbrook yeah <laughs> yes she said she lives here so like it was like a five minute walk for her to come to ou and the meadowbrook but yeah um I wonder too if like the future data that we find like them could be used to help like I don't know grant writing for Pontiac to get something similar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Someone else to be able to say here's the I research did. saying how much you know seniors benefit from the services. Right. Yeah. And I they did. need to be free in order for right. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be useful like in uh, other yeah. places in the county. Yeah. Yeah. I let actually I let um Angela know that they opened a Sterling Heights um community center. It is in 17 in Dodge Park, where I live. It's in front of Stevenson High School. So um, she thought of maybe bringing a Cindy, not Cindy herself, but a Cindy to that uh, location as well. That way it's like more beneficial for the members and they could just like drop by and get their blood pressure taken if they are like seniors and they don't have like the actual like machines over there and the tools. So that would be even more beneficial for not only like the OPC, but also um, Sterling Heights as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> turns out I know a lot about the OPC yeah. <laughs> because I actually could qualify to be a member. Uh, so uh, it is a great, great place. So uh, you, you all, you, the, the energy in your eyes tells me you really enjoyed the experience. Yes. Yeah. And it was one of those things where you feel like, wow, this is kind of an undiscovered job. Um, it, 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 it really is. So, actually, my uh, question, I guess, is your experience, you're graduating. Yes. And I, I think you're all going off to future great careers and mm -hmm. you may still be around, hopefully, or you might not. But what, how could we get? an even better relationship with our school and OPC and get you know students who are first coming here. Because imagine if you knew about this um, yes. when you were in your sophomore, maybe not your freshman year, but there's too much that's going on. Yeah. And maybe by sophomore year or something, 
imagine what you could have done in terms of, of building relationships. So that's what I'm, what I, my question in general is, how could we do better with these kinds of relationships? How could we build these kinds of relationships? I think they do have volunteer opportunities. I did see a yeah. flyer that had like volunteer needed uh, come with a flyer like that. So maybe we can like partner up with them uh, like through Eclipse like we do for essential emergencies and things like that. Yeah, and I know a lot of students um, have health like careers or like jobs in the healthcare field. And you know, we know how to take basic vitals and blood sugars. So I think right. as volunteers, we could do a little bit more than kind of like communicating with them and stuff. So I think maybe helping the nurse, because I know a lot of us kind of yeah. help the nurse too. Yeah. So I think that'd be a great volunteer opportunity. Adding more to that. Yeah, adding more to that. I, I talked to Angela about this too. I told her that we like most of us do know like how to take vitals and everything. So we could actually help Angela in her um study area or like that room. So like to get more members into like checking their vitals. And also I would say since we are in Eclipse, maybe we could like coordinate um an event that is just basically like solely only about like volunteering at the OPC that way it's like may maybe like our relationship will become more like um like strong you could say and also just talking to Angela and she could like coordinate uh, an event with us too yeah. yeah I do think sometimes it's like introducing you to the experience yeah. and then once you know or you had a connection or something then you're more encouraged so you then go back and volunteer to do it uh, cool or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So when you form the questionnaire, um, you, uh, you, you talked a little bit about that, but uh, how, how deep is that question or how many questions? Are there? Um, it was about 12 to 15 questions, and these are the ones, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So this is the, the first part of the survey, and we section it off of like each category, like what matters most, and also like the lifestyles. And um, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so it was like basically like on a scale of one to 10. How would you rate your health? Um, do you have someone that motivates you? And you know, like transportation, independent transportation. Yes. Do you have access to like healthy lifestyle or healthy food, nutritionals? And like what kind of medication you're taking? Do you have why you're taking why you're taking medication? And also, um, do you visit your primary care doctor? as um as often and according to and she visited him two times a year yes. i think the good thing about like interviewing them in person is that we got to make it a little more individualized mm -hmm. and um you know kind of build upon our questions to make it more specific to the person so. mm -hmm. well and you feel like more of a a person when someone's sitting there with you versus i just got to take another survey yeah. and yeah check this box yeah. yeah you could see like you know she was just so very she was very yeah she was like en enthusiastic about yeah, answering yeah, our like questions very passionate i feel it. like yeah i feel like if you just sit there and like talk to them instead of like just like looking at the paper and like um or let them do the like the questions and answer them that would be a little bit more abroad and um sometimes like the seniors like they might not like write like their actual thoughts so it's better to like us maybe like ask them the questions and they like get to answer it so and they, you know they really do have a broad range it was surprising yeah. to me when yeah. i first visited yeah when i first came here i lived in the community one day seven years ago i i was surprised at, at the vitality of the place yeah yeah right? yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you have, you know, it, it does permit 50 year olds, so you could be 51, 53, and they're even much younger people than 80. <laughs> uh, but it works. I mean, I kind of wondered in a way would, would this be two different communities living in the same building? You know, right. it, mm -hmm. it could be that way. You could think of it that way. Right. But actually, no, I think it really kind of integrates as a kind of a collective. I mean, obviously, there are some people running around the track and some people are. You know, managing yeah. with wheels with the with walkers, yeah. and they're not the same thing. But, but I think as a community of people supporting each other, mm -hmm. I think there's a there's a uh, real connection that is important. So Definitely, I think it's a really amazing place. To be honest, I, yeah. yeah, it's 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 something that we should really recognize as a mm -hmm. as a gem for the community. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. It'd be like a like long term volunteer experience. Yeah, I think for sure. sure. Like in the same way that people go to like uh well, yeah. 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 Every Saturday for like three hours, you yeah. can easily go and spend three hours with a person and right. just the socialization part. Even if you yeah. weren't doing anything else but just hanging out and yeah. talking yeah. to them, yeah. we already know that that's a huge benefit. Yeah. On yeah. top of, hey, let's do like line dancing class and like yeah. dance all the you know, the whole day or let's play bingo or let's yeah, do something physical. So I feel like they will love that because um since we are like graduates or I mean um uh, undergrads they would think of us as like their grandkids so they would it's feel really like younger. more of a connection towards us and also actually um i i need to add uh this i asked cindy if they have um like difficulty with like translation or anything and she did say that they do not have someone that uh could translate for them or like they did have like a, an older person that came with her son and she was not able to like talk and speak like English so that was kind of a difficult um problem to like set like about the OPC like maybe if we have interpreters like translators that could um help out like students like me myself I could just go and like um talk if there is like a, a Chaldean person or a Middle Eastern person I could just communicate with them in Arabic and I could just relay the message to Cindy so that way she knows what the problem is with the member like they're like um about their health and what their um complaints are about the place. Yeah, yeah what I think is so impressive is the positivity of that. You know, yeah. that it's it, you're serving elders, but they're yeah. having a great time. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, if there's a maybe we should do the, the survey for what's the new name. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm curious for what you had said that you, in years past it was not that connected to the health. I'm kind of surprised about that. Yeah, yeah, that was surprising. My wife actually worked there for a while. And she suggested, you know, doing blood pressures. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, we're not doing that. So what, what did they used to do? Nothing. You could just go there. It's like a community center. Like yeah. a community center. Yeah. Just a community center. Ascension. Then is it ascension because they became a partner? Yeah, I would think so. I would think that. Well, they had a. So the original director retired a few years back, and I think that she was a very stubborn person. <laughs> so she didn't want to change anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't even want people to have CPR training because she didn't want them to touch. Like they went down. They had to yeah yeah wow yeah um, yeah so it, again my experience of knowing it is through when i came as a dean i wanted to connect to different groups and so i interviewed or i, I went there and interviewed other people I really wanted to learn about it. but what i didn't get as much that you introduced me to i think now is is how tightly related ascension is mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to that and i think that that's really something yeah uh, yeah yeah for sure the hospital uh, would choose to uh, to provide that level of support, yeah. and obviously that's having a real impact in, the, yeah. in communicating out through the community about how to take. You know, the individuals themselves that would understand that they need to participate in their own um, healthcare, so or their own not care, their own health, which they right. don't need care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 a lot of great experiences. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You can relax now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Good. So I'll see you in a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very exciting. I'll see you in the fall. In the fall. <laughs> yeah, my graduation is in the fall. Oh, well, 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 great job. Thank you. So this was the YPC. YPC. The younger people. <laughs> <laughs> or if we want to keep going with the OPC, like outgoing people's um, commission. It's a better name, right? Thank you for being here. Thank you. That's Thank you. Is it recording? Yes. So you guys did a really good job. I'm very thankful for that. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know what to expect.